A project I've been working on several months at the end of last year and the beginning of this year was recreating the handbooks for the HP 15C. So I'd like to talk a little bit about what I did, how I did it, and why I did it. So when the 15C came out in 1982, there were originally two manuals. There was the owner's handbook, which came with the calculator. It was written by Diana Roy, Robert Barkin, and Hank Schroeder. And then available for separate purchase was the advanced functions handbook. That was written by Professor Dr. William Kahan, who we mentioned several times, uh, Paul McClellan, and Joseph Tanzini. These were produced before modern desktop publishing, so there's no electronic copy. All we have of them are the printed manuals. Oh, yeah. Well, wait a minute. But you do have a printed book. We have the printed book, and that's it. Now, scanning and character recognition doesn't help. It helps. There are things you can do with that, and yes, but there are more we wanted to do here. So in 2011, uh, there was the 15C limited edition, and it had a new owner's handbook. Uh, Felix Gross and David Hayden, da David's here now, but Felix unfortunately could not make it this year. They worked on this for a while where they took the original manual and they recreated it, recreated it in Microsoft Word 2007. The ultimate printed version that shipped with the 15C LE was printed eight and a quarter by five and a half inches, black and white, 288 pages. The first 258 pages match the contents of the original 15C manual page for page. So if you say something is on page X, it's the same page on either manual. Uh, HP produced a new keycap key font for it. They used the font Futura for the headings and Times New Roman for the body. And most of the diagrams and graphics in it, unfortunately, are very low resolution scans from the original handbook. Yes, yes. My favorite. Uh, presented at HHC 2018 by Felix and Dave was their work in 2012 to recreate the Advanced Functions Handbook for the 15C Limited Edition. This was also done in Word 20, uh, 2007. When they were working on it, they got it about, I would, I would say, about 80% complete after a year and a half of work. And at that point, HP wanted to release it, so HP took it over and finished it. The final printed copy was 8.5 by 11, black and white, but not sold in printed form, only delivered as a PDF, which you would print yourself. This reused the same keycap font. They changed the head headings to Arial, but kept Times New Roman for the body. Now, was there a technical reason to change the, the, the format? I don't know. M my guess is it's easy for people to print an 8.5 by 11. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fewer pages that way. Not many fewer, but it is somewhat fewer. I saw the original documents that Dave and Felix had produced for HP for the, both the owner's handbook and the advanced functions handbook, and both of them were very nicely formatted. They tried to make them look just like the original, similar fonts, colors, and everything, just very nicely done. Unfortunately, when HP took over, they decided to reformat things their own way and made them not look so attractive. And also, when HP took over and finished them up, they didn't really finish them in that they were, there were a lot of mistakes in them. So we ha despite having several iterations of the 15C Owner's Handbook, different PDF versions, the final version was 2.4. Uh, there were still quite a few mistakes left, I think dozens, in an errata file that is on the HHC 2018 folder of your, your USB drive. And also there are a lot more issues with them that were never documented, just not discovered or not mentioned by anybody. Uh, just a, a little aside here, I consider the first versions of the, the 15C owner's handbook to be considered like edition one. Really, they're lettered, I think, A through G, and then I think they had a edition one after that. Edition two was the first one that came out with the 15C LE. Finally, 2.4 was the last, and now 3.0 is, edition three is what I worked on now. So I had seen this, and I knew from last year's HHC that there was going to be a, an updated 15C coming out, the collector's edition. And it 
adds more memory compared to the past versions and also the hardware is slightly different in that it has a screw in the battery door. This meant that it was not ideal to reuse the existing manual because changes would have to be made to accommodate the new calculator's differences. Unfortunately, HP being HP does not keep backups that are easily accessible for anything. This means anything HP produces will get lost unless someone else kept a copy. And that was the case of the 15C LE manuals too. You think, oh, this is 2011, 2012, they'd have them. Nope, they never learned their lesson. So all HP had were the original, the, the output PDF files, not the original Word documents or whatever software they ultimately used for them. And the Word files I had were just the ones that Felix and David handed off to HP, which were not complete. I, as a result, did not have very high expectations that the manual for the 15C collector's edition would be very good, considering they didn't have anything to base it on aside from PDFs. And even Moravi admitted that they'd probably just edit the PDF file directly from the LE to update it for the collector's edition. The Advanced Functions Handbook in particular was a long way away from being done because the, there are dozens of pages that were just scans put in the Word document, like you need to convert these to text still. So I, I was thinking, oh, a lot of people regard the 15C's manuals as being among the best HP ever produced. I know there are some people who strongly disagree, but a lot of people I think, think they are among the best. And I felt that because of such highly regarded manuals, it would be important to have them be reproduced very nicely for the 15C CE. So I made an offer to Moravia they couldn't refuse. I would make the manual for free. So my plan was to recreate the owner's handbook in Word 2021 based on what Dave and Felix had produced their Word document from. I would apply fixes for everything that had been reported. I would go through identifying other mistakes. I'd update the details for the collector's edition. I would change the fonts. Uh, at this time, the HP standard corporate font was called HP Simplified. Back when the limited edition came out, it was, it was Futura. And HP Simplified, at least to me, is a much more attractive font for body text and stuff like that. I also was going to rescan all the artwork, which I actually did as part of my documentation project and then redraw any diagrams that needed to be redrawn uh, or, re or reuse the scans. It just depends on how much I'd have time for. If I get sick of redrawing them, I'll just use the scans. And then I would improve the formatting and restore the color to match the original so we'd have the blue, uh, the blue spot color where it was on the original. And also what I was pushing for and was able to make happen was to make the manual full color. In other words, use not just the blue spot color for highlighting things, but uh, blue for the blue shift, shifted keys and gold for the gold shifted keys. Decade. Yeah, so over the decade between when the two of them worked on the limited edition manual and I started on this one, some things had changed. Word got a much nicer equation writer, but it also meant I had to remake all the mathematical expressions. The, I first started working on this actually in Word 2013, which had some backwards compatibility with the old Word equation writer, but then 2021 it just didn't have it at all and I had to use the new one. Uh, also what was kind of interesting when I got started on this is then HP changed their corporate branding again and they defined a new font called Forma DJR for all marketing materials. I looked at their branding regulations, branding guidelines, and it turns out it's only necessary for marketing. For documentation, you can keep using HP Simplified. And you, you saw, as you saw in the presentations this morning, oh, some of the HP stuff that, uh, that Mitch and others were showing is still in HP Simplified, so it hasn't been a full switch over. So I didn't feel bad about continuing to use HP Simplified. Plus, I prefer the appearance of HP Simplified for body text. Other, another issue was with the fonts. The HP 15C keycap font that HP had commissioned for the limited edition didn't meet my specifications. The, the text was also based on Futura, which was HP standard at the time, but has no uh, similarity to the font on the actual keyboard. I wanted to use Helvetica, which is pretty much the font used for most of the keycap 
characters, except for the special characters, and for those, I would need to do something special to make them work. Then the HP simplified font was really just for the Latin alphabet. The problem is that the 15C manual has a lot of Greek characters, so I had to add support for those. Also, one thing that's been kind of a difficulty for anyone trying to make HP documentation is there's certain letters that don't exist in Unicode, like X macron, X with a bar on top, and you can uh, compose them with the Unicode composition codes. The problem then is they're not always aligned right, especially if you have italics, then the bar is like off to the side and it doesn't look good. So I wanted to have characters that had those uh, diacritical marks built into them to ensure they would always render properly. So time to get out Font Forge, which is a free font editing package, and make my own fonts and make font changes. So first I made a new keycap font. This has the same name and the same code points, in other words, which uh, Unicode code point matches with which glyph as the original 15C keycap font. So it's completely <laughs> drop-in replacement. But I fixed the issues with it. First, the corner run, you can't really see in this, but the rounded edges here were inconsistent. Like the top part was more rounded than the side part, and some characters were more rounded than others. I made them all consistent. The font is now Helvetica rather than uh, Futura. Uh, one thing that really bothered me, the arrows were so inconsistent. Three different types of arrows on the arrow keys. I made them all the same arrow. So in the special characters, some were close, some were very far away from what they actually look like on the keys. So I redrew all the special keys to make them, make them the same as the calculator too. This font is on your USB drive so that you can use it for making 15C documentation. I also enhanced the HP simplified font, here adding the Greek characters that we needed. It, ha it had pi and it had sig capital sigma, but it didn't have like gamma and alpha and some of the others. And then I added some pre-composed characters with the macron with the hat or whatever you want to call it. And I also made not just the regular font, but the bold font, bold italic and italic. So all four fonts in the typeface are improved and on the USB drive as well for your use. I also discovered in the original font there is an HP logo glyph that was not mapped to any key point, any code point. So I mapped it to a special, a private use area code point, which you can get at, like in Word, you do insert special character and you'll find it. While going through the owner's handbook, uh, Gene and I exchanged many emails, Gene Wright, uh, hundreds, I'm sure, uh, as he would proofread things, can find issues, and I'd fix them, I'd send them new updates, and uh, we went through that for several months, and we Sometimes made... Sometimes 10 per night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we made hundreds and hundreds of fixes. Most of them were pretty minor, but we even discovered some mistakes in the original 15C owner's handbook. For example, this on page 168, there was a number, t uh, number 11 that was supposed to be a 10 in the superscript there. I made a couple additions of new appendices. So <coughs> between the original 15C and the subsequent ones, the appendix F, which had legal regulatory information, it was much smaller, which meant that all the pages after that would no longer have the same page number as the original handbook. So I added two new appendices in there, which made the page numbers match after that. One was just a quick overview between the 15C, the original one, and the collector's edition. And the other was a, a finally a place to officially document the limitations or bugs, whatever you want to call them, in the, in the original 15C. I suppose now that they're documented, they're no longer bugs because that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, these had been mentioned on the forum before, sometimes a long, long time, discovered a long, long time after the calculator came out. Others had been known for some time, but now they're all documented in one place. Also, uh, a new introduction was written by Gene and Vladek Miradrejevich to introduce users to the history of HP calculators where we came across the 15C in the first place. Those are 11 pages at the beginning of the manual, and I gave them Roman numerals for page numbers to not shift the page numbering. One thing I thought was important is ensuring that the text is legible. Uh, the original 15C manual, I think, was 
pretty well done. The font was nice and clear. It's just a very small form factor, four and five eighths by six and five eighths inch pages. With the limited edition, the pages were much bigger, five and a half by eight and a quarter, but they just didn't use the paper effectively. They had large margins, lots of white space, and a small font that was not very easy to read. So for the collector's edition, it's about the same size paper as the limited edition. It's a st standard A5 paper, but the text is now, at least I feel, much more legible. I printed sample pages at 100% as I was testing it to make sure things would look good. I also made the inner margin a quarter inch wider than the outer margin so that there would be room for the binding, not making text too close to the middle part of the page. Uh, also one thing people have commented is how do you get the layout to look so good making it in Word and not desktop publishing software. So as some of you know with Word, spacing isn't always the best. I did manual kerning, which is the spacing between characters in a lot of places just to make things space just right, making the spacing 1.2 points greater so characters weren't too close. One little detail I paid attention to is that the Greek lowercase letter epsilon has two different forms. There is the lunate form, and that was the form used in the original 15C manual. And the limited edition manual used the standard form. And I emailed Dr. Hahn, who is actually still alive. He's like 80-something, maybe 90 years old. But his email address is still out there. I emailed him, did not get a response as to why he chose that. I emailed Dave and Felix, and they just said they didn't realize it changed. They just picked what they had, <laughs> what it had. So I asked around some more, and I finally decided you, th that the 15C LE form was the better one to use, the standard form of Epsilon. That's what most people use. I tried to restore the color. So upper left here is what the original 15C manual looked like. This was the limited edition. So it lost the color. Formatting isn't necessarily the best. This is the new one. I tried to make it much more faithful to the original. This is just one example. There are many like that. Also, adding color. Here's page 88. See, is the blue for the page number, the heading, everything else black. Uh, I believe that sometimes you use blue, sometimes you use black. This was inconsistent on the brace. The limited edition manual, all black and white. For the new one, keystrokes are now either gold or blue, depending on the character on the, on the keys, and the braces are all blue. I redrew the, di the diagrams. This is the original 15C. This is the limited edition. You can see very fuzzy and pale. It was just not, not a very good quality scan that was huge, used. And here's my total recreation of it in Word. Another example. Here's one. Where, this is the limited edition. You can see, again, it's fuzzy. My original plan here was to take a scan from the original manual, which I, which I did, and digitally edit it to fix the 322 to 546, the 65 to 97 for the number, the register numbers. And I had that originally and decide, you know, it'll look even better if I redraw it. So I redrew this and several others like it as well. I rescanned all the artwork. This is from the limited edition. You can see it's much sharper and brighter for the, the new scan of the artwork, since HP used to have very interesting art, custom art done throughout the manuals. Uh, finally, another, some artwork I, mo I updated. The 15C limited edition, again, was just a scan from the original manual, but kind of faded. I updated it to add the collector's edition logo and to remove the Hewlett Packard name from the bottom so it matches the actual calculator. Some sections we expanded. Gene. Uh, uh, Gene had some really good suggestions for things that could be improved on the manual. Sometimes we wanted to keep the same page numbers, but sometimes there's white space in areas that were convenient to add things. Here on page 89, it just gave a few keystrokes for a program. But most of the other programs aren't just keystrokes. They give you the key codes and they give you comments. So we did that. We expand out the keystrokes, add the, the, the key codes and comments to be just like all the other programs. I noticed a lot of inconsistencies with the italics in the limited edition, especially among the parentheses. So here, opening paren is italicized, closed parenthesis is not italicized. Again, made them consistent with manual occurring as necessary. Same thing here with functions. F of T, there you've got italicized. H of T, they're not. Again, make it so the parentheses are never italicized. And again, this took manual occurring between the F and the paren, the open paren, so it doesn't because the italics F would overlap otherwise. 
So once I did that, then I decided, well, let's do the advanced functions handbook as well. I knew it was not going to be printed with a calculator. I was hoping to get it printed, which hasn't happened yet, but still hoping for that. But I decided to make it just like the owner's handbook, same size, same fonts, same colors, everything. When Felix and David had worked, begun their work on the AFH, they, unlike the owner's handbook, tried to make the index and table of contents dynamically generated. So the index would then require cross-references put throughout the whole document. And they got, I think, maybe a third of the way through it at the point when they stopped. I can't remember now, so I had to go through and for every single table of contents entry, or no, sorry, excuse me, every single index entry in the original owner's handbook, I had to find the place on the page and set up the cross-reference and word for that, which was pretty tedious. But I was able to do that, so now those are generated automatically. And the advanced functions handbook for the limited edition, as I said, was only about 80% done when it was passed over to HP. And when HP started working on it, they didn't seem to care much about proofreading, so it was just full of mistakes. Uh, we even found some mistakes in the original advanced functions handbook from the original 15C and fixed those. And then Gene pointed out that the last three program examples in the AFH were not commented. Uh, various reasons why that may have happened. I think one is just the last program was so complicated nobody even wanted to try to comment it. But that just makes it even worse because then nobody can possibly understand it. It was doing some crazy stuff with uh, abusing the statistics registers to improve some accuracy on things. So Gene wrote comments for one of them. I wrote comments for the, another one. And then we got to the third and just didn't touch it for several months. And then I got back to it. I started writing comments, and I got so confused I gave up. I talked to David Hayden, and he thankfully was able to write the comments for the last one. That was very helpful. And I put together what he did with what I did and finally had something that was pretty good. Something else that was I noticed, so a lot of times in the examples of the old HP manuals, they had this cool artwork that's related to the example. And the owner's handbook is full of those. The advanced functions handbook does not have any. However, one of the examples in the Ag advanced functions handbook was taken from the 34C manual. So I took the artwork from that and added a little bit more color to the manual. So if you haven't spotted that, see if you can find it. Fortunately, someone stole my thunder and mentioned it in the museum forum. <laughs> Here's an example where we add the comments on the example on page 198. So this was the original owner's handbook. This is the new one with comments for everything. Here's another sample page. This is the original manual. This is the limited edition, which because it was 8.5 by 11, it flowed the pages differently. So instead of being page 38, it's 34. But this is the new one. Again, you can see the color and a little bit more legible text and that kind of thing. Although I suppose if you're in the back, this is all illegible. I added navigation bookmarks, the PDF, so that you can jump to all the different sections easily. And then the cover on both the, art, the artwork for the cover was originally done by Moravia, and I redid it in Word to make it consistent with everything. And actually, this image, the, the photo that you see on the packaging and everything, I made that. I didn't take the photo. The photo was HP's press photo of the 15C limited edition. And I digitally manipulated it to change it from saying limited edition to collector's edition and removed the HP logo from the bottom and shifted the coloring a bit to match the color scheme of the new one. So this is a fake photo that I made, not a real photo. <laughs> did you use AI? No AI. Although I'm a little artificial, so maybe. <laughs> Just some acknowledgments. As I've mentioned many times, David Hayden, Felix Gross, they put a tremendous amount of time in 2010 to 2012 making the limited edition versions. And without that head start, this would have taken me a whole lot more than the several months that it did. And of course, Gene Wright, who I've mentioned, countless rounds of proofreading and encouraging and con contributing enhancements, stuff like that. David, again, for that last example. Valentin Albio, he very painstakingly double-checked the, the comments. I, I was worried. I did not want to add documentation for programs that was wrong. And I knew he really knows the 15C programming. So he, he spent hours going through all three programs to make sure that there were no mistakes in any of our, in any, in any of our comments. And of course, Bob Prosperi, Jake Schwartz, Vladek Miradojevic, they did additional proofreading and contributions as well. Any questions? 
advanced functions handbook. Fabulous job, Eric. Thank you. Yeah.